Chapter 5 Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they looked for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he, whom we had sometimes in derision, and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness, and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God, and his lot is among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts, where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What hath pride profited us? Or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, and as a post that hasted by, and as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found, but the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them, is passed through, and therein afterwards no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it parteth the air, which immediately cometh together again, so that a man cannot know where it went through. Even so we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end, and had no sign of virtue to shew, but were consumed in our own wickedness. For the hope of the godly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest, and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. But the righteous live for evermore, their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom, and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand, for with his right hand shall he cover them, and with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor, and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate, and true judgment instead of an helmet. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. His severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword, and the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad and from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bough, shall they fly to the mark. And hailstones full of wrath shall be cast as out of a stone bow, and the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the floods shall cruelly drown them. Yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, and like a storm shall blow them away. Thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill-dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Chapter 6 Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear, ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works, and search out your counsels. Because, being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of God. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. For mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person, neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness, for he hath made the small and great, and careth for all alike. But a sore trial shall come upon the mighty. Unto you therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom, 
and not fall away. For they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Wisdom is glorious, and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her, in making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think, therefore, upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, sheweth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto God. Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign for evermore. As for wisdom, what she is, and how she came up, I will tell you, and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, and bring the knowledge of her into light, and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, and a wise king is the upholding of the people. Receive therefore instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Chapter 7 I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood, of the seed of man, and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air, and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature, and the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes, and that with cares. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life, and the like going out. Wherefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones, and esteemed riches nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty, and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. All good things together came to me with her, and innumerable riches in her hands. And I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom goeth before them, and I knew not that she was the mother of them. I learned diligently, and do communicate her liberally, I do not hide her riches. For she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of God, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. God hath granted me to speak as I would, and to conceive as is meet for the things that are given me, because it is he that leadeth unto wisdom, and directeth the wise. For in his hand are both we and our words all wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship for he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely, to know how the world was made, and the operation of the elements, the beginning, ending, and midst of the times, the alterations of the turning of the sun, and the change of seasons, the circuits of years, and the positions of stars, the natures of living creatures, and the furies of wild beasts, the violence of winds, and the reasonings of men, the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots, and all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. For wisdom, 
which is the worker of all things, taught me, for in her is an understanding spirit holy, one only, manifold, subtil, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the thing that is good quick, which cannot be leaded, ready to do good, kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding, pure and most subtle spirits. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of God, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty, therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God, and the image of His goodness. And being but one, she can do all things, and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new, and in all ages entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of God and prophets. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. For she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of stars, being compared with the light, she is found before it. For after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom.